the third item on the agenda are the minutes. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Delegations. Uh, Terry Bell is here with uh, Chester County Youth Not Forward and asked if he'd come up. I think he has something he might be dressed for. Another night to uh, venue for uh, building an excellent police department. Great leadership and uh, that affects our juvenile court and our children uh, throughout the city. And we've got a letter I want to bring. Okay, I'd like to read the letter. If you want the minutes, that's okay. You need this time to read? No. In regard to the contemporary actions of Sergeant Jason Rhodes of the last year, on November 9th, 2014, Sergeant Jason Rhodes, along with other officers of the Henderson Police Department, found several children in a neglectful environment. Sergeant Rhodes, his fellow officers, Jennifer Maxwell of the Department of Children's Services successfully resolved the situation by bringing the children into state custody. Sergeant Rhodes did not end his involvement in the care of the children at this point, even though his duties had been fulfilled. During the course of investigating this incident, Sergeant Rhodes became aware that the children wanted their bikes, but no one was available to transport the bikes to the foster home. Sergeant Rhodes went beyond the call of duty on the following day, carried the bikes to the children. This is more than one county away from quite a distance. He did this during his time off at his own expense. And I want you to know the children and the family greatly appreciate it along with the court. In another incident, earlier this year, on March 21st, 2014, I'm not even sure he knows the full scope of what happened. I received a call from Sergeant Rhodes, and these facts kind of relate to that. Sergeant Rhodes responded to a home in which the mother and child were in dispute. And during the interview with the child, she opened up to Sergeant Rhodes about underlying problems of neglect, depression, and medical concerns. Sergeant Rhodes took proper steps to see the child receive the resources she needed. As a result of that action, the child received professional help, 
those professionals discovered the child had a life-threatening medical condition. Sergeant Rhodes' ability to relate to the child and make appropriate referrals, probably unknown to him to this day, saved that child's life over the course of about a three-week period when they found out. Uh, in the midst of that, what the child's condition was. And on behalf of the Chief of Court, uh, the judge has written it. I wanted to express gratitude to Sergeant Rhodes and the police department for the devotion to the children of this county. Jason, I really appreciate you. Thank you very much. That's very humble. Thank you for the good Terry. Before Terry leaves, before he leaves, a lot of y'all might not know this. But uh, we have a, a city representative from Solid Waste. We did not know that we were supposed to have one. <laughs> Terry, since he lived in the city of the county commission, he was appointed. He was one of those deals where you don't know you got appointed. You look at the meeting and see the minutes, you just got appointed. So if you have any problem with Solid Waste, we want to lower our tipping fees. Terry's the one we need to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> no. I will try to represent your interest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is uh, my kids here to go over our heart report. Well, fortunately, what I've got to say is not nearly as impressive as what you just heard. So. Okay, you should have uh, your audit report or our audit report in front of you there. Like you might have a long agenda, so I'm trying to be brief. And as always, I don't know if y'all have had a chance to look at it, but if you do look at it in more detail at a later date and you have a question, just feel free to call me up. Bobby uh, and Jim both have a number that they know how to get me. And I'll be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, starting out, if you will, we'll flip to page two, which is actually about the seventh page. Start number, uh, numbering them for a couple of things. This is our opinion on your June 30th, 2014 financial statements. Uh, the two paragraphs there I want to draw your attention to. Uh, the second paragraph is headed up management's responsibility. Uh, if you read through that, essentially what it says is even though we draft them, these aren't my financial statements. Performing service for you and helping you draft them and write them. If you flip over to the next page, I, I apologize that this report takes three pages to say, but uh, it ought to say about half that thing. If uh, top of page three on the paragraph it says opinions, and I won't read that, but I, I will say this is what is called a claim opinion. It says, in essence, your financial statements are fair representation of the financial condition of the city. Okay, let's go to page 12. Basis means your 
reports of capital assets on the statement of deposition, which is synonymous to the balance sheet, and on the statement of activities, which is synonymous to the income statement. You record all the depreciation on that, which so it includes depreciation on your city hall, your streets, uh, those kinds of things. Anyway, if you look on page 12, the two columns there uh, is split into two types of activities. The business type activity, which is the second column, is essentially the city's utility operations, uh, water, sewer, and gas, and the governmental activity column is everything else. You'll notice you've got total assets of 11.2 million in the governmental activities column and 18.2 million in the uh, business type activities column. And before you get excited about those seemingly big numbers, uh, the last section uh, on that page there, start to head up capital assets, that's everything you have invested in capital assets, which is obviously not schedule. So the, uh, the numbers represent things that you actually have available uh, for operation of the city uh, will be the top two thirds of that statement. Okay, if you look at the next page, this is the other the second part of the statement of net position I'll focus your attention on the bottom part of net position. That's the net worth of the city, $22.15 million. 7.5 of that being in the governmental activities and 14.6 being in the business type activities. And again, if you look up from the bottom, it says net net position, net investment, and capital assets. Now, that's what you have, net of any debt that you've incurred to buy those capital assets, investing in your capital assets. So the last four lines is really what you have available to operate the day-to-day -day operations of the city. Uh, the restricted lines there, drugs, State Street aid, and sanitation, are monies that are fund balances or net position that you have restricted you can only be used for those purposes. And the unrestricted portion can be used for anything uh, in the governmental activities column. And the business type activities, that of course is restricted to your building operations. Okay, go to page 14. This odd looking character which is the equivalent of an income statement. business for yourself, uh, you probably produce an income statement, and this is what this is. It's a little more, a little bit harder to read, uh, so I'll walk you through that. The first column is the expenses and the breaking down between the various governmental activities, general government, public safety, public works, and so forth, and then the business type activities, water, sewer, and gas. And then the next three columns are revenues that are derived or are directly related to those services. It may be grants that you get to provide the service, uh, it may be garbage fees that you collect for uh, picking up garbage. In public safety, uh, charges for services include uh, traffic fines. I, I doubt most citizens would think that's a service, but that's what's in, that's in there. Uh, and then the uh, fifth column over is the net cost of the city after the related revenue providing that service. <clears throat> As you would expect, most of those in the governmental activities column are negatives, which means it costs the city more to provide that service than the revenue is derived directly from providing that service. And there, that's why you have sales tax and property tax. The general revenues that aren't, don't, uh, aren't directly connected to any type of service you provide are listed underneath that's what goes to subsidize or offset that two and a half million dollar net loss to provide services. Okay, look on uh, page 17. Switch gears a little bit here. This is what you all, it's again more summarized, but this is what you all are used to seeing every month. Uh, the operations of the other than the utilities, the operations. Uh, the general fund finished the year with a surplus of 223,000. The sanitation fund finished with a 
surplus of 31,000. The other funds had a debt uh, deficit of 327,000. Most of that was because you've got a debt service fund that uh, pays principal interest. And that's, that was the majority of that 327,000. Okay, if you flip to the page 21. Uh, this is the operating statement for water, sewer, and gas funds. Uh, it's what you all see every month is probably probably easier to read because this one will break it down to operating and non-operating. I uh, just did some of the high points. Uh, revenues there were 1.7 million for water and sewer, uh, 3.1 for gas, uh, expenses uh, 1.5 million for water and sewer. Nine million for gas, so we had an operating income, water and sewer, 173,000, and gas system, 135,000. Then below that are non operating revenues and interest, which uh, are like your investment income uh, when you sell something that's non operating, and the interest on your long term debt is non operating, uh, plus any capital contributions that you get. You look about uh, a couple inches up at the bottom, you see a line item what we call change of that position. That's essentially the bottom line. You know, it's in turn. The water and sewer was 212,000, and the gas system was 133,000. Now, uh, Jim has got a letter that I don't think y'all have seen yet. Uh, he called me about it, and I told him not to worry about it, just disregard it. When y'all sent your budget into the state, State, the comptroller's office somehow has got developed a strange interpretation of state law as it relates to your utility rates. And the letter they sent back to Jim said you need to raise your utility rates. What possibly need to raise your utility rates? And they were advising you all to look closely at that. When you look at this, you obviously see that the system is healthy. Both your systems are. There's no reason to raise the rates at this time. And what that letter stems from is an odd interpretation that the company will come up with that says your rates have to cover not only your depreciation, which is a non-cash expense, it also has to cover the debt uh, reduction, the principal reduction on the long-term debt, which is not even an expense. It's just an item on your balance sheet. You take cash and you pay off debt. It's not an expense. Uh, the TSCPA, the Tennessee Society, as well as the TAUD, Tennessee Association of Utility Districts, which I think you all belong to, is taking this issue up with the uh, Comptroller's Office. And I think it, be, it may take some legislation to help them uh, reinterpret the, the, code, the section of the state code that they're pulling this from, uh, but I think it'll be resolved. I don't think you have to worry about it at this time. There are some utilities in the state that need to raise their rates, y'all. Fortunately, Okay, and if you'll flip over to page 62, this is, the, uh, I'm sorry, 61 and 62. This is the same thing that we just looked at. It just breaks down the, the water and sewer system are, is in one fund, but you all do track the operations of the water and sewer system uh, separately which is why it's that way. Uh, you don't want the water users subsidizing sewer operation, nor do you want the sewer users subsidizing water. So this just gives you a detail, a breakdown of that $212,000 change in that position. Uh, 84 of that was attributable to the water fund, and 128000 was attributable to the uh, water to the sewer operation. They want to point out one number right above that 127000 which is that 72000 Those are payment grant monies that came back into us. So actually the sewer department, if you take that back out, if you've got that capital, we're back down to what, $55,000. Yeah. So it's not a huge amount of money we're making. Uh, the letter you mentioned, I'll go ahead and mention, if you actually heard it the way the comptroller was asking us to, you'd be looking at a 25% increase in water and sewer budget. Yeah, the, the, that, that's why we're going to address this with the comptroller's office. They're 
if you apply their interpretation, the only utilities in the state who wouldn't have to raise their rates are the ones that have absolutely no debt. It's kind of silly. Now, that being said, there are some utilities out there that are going to charge enough, uh, like I said, no, or certainly not one of them. Okay, uh, flip to page 70. Being an engineer, I'm not going to attempt to say the engineering behind this. This is not a financial statement, but it is a required schedule that the uh, state requires to win your financial statements. It's essentially an analysis of your water loss. If you look down there, about two inches up from the bottom, it says your score is 74 out of 100. Uh, that's uh, on the surface that may not seem that good, but that's actually a good score. I mean, we've seen some a lot lower than that. Most water systems, I mean, you have water that's unaccounted for because uh, putting out fires, back flushing your filter, and leaks. And this attempts to sort of quantify what's in each of those areas, plus some other areas. Okay, go to page 72. I'll tell you what this is. Uh, this is a summary of the state and federal grants that you got and spent in the last fiscal year, uh, $187,000 in federal money and $29,000 in state money. Now these are grants, this is not like the state shared sales tax, that kind of thing. All right, come in on the end here. Flip over to page 73. our report on internal control and compliance. We are required to look at your internal controls to make sure that we don't see any deficiencies in them. And if you find any, we have to report them to you. Uh, please say we, uh, your internal controls are good. We don't find anything that we believe is material weakness or deficiency that needs to be reported to you. Uh, we also are required to look at compliance with law as it may impact your financial statements. Uh, now that, that's a kind of broad area. We don't look at compliance with all laws and regulations. That would be impossible. Um, well, it would not be impossible, but it's probably not something anybody wants to pay for. But we are required to look at compliance with federal and state laws and, and your own charter and, and city code as it relates to your financial statements to make sure there's no material non-compliance. This report does say we found no material non-compliance. Okay. And we have no findings to give you. Um, not even any minors this year. Uh, your uh, staff does an excellent job. To be, to be commended. Probably very helpful to us to make our job easy to do. And that's a long a long-winded explanation. If you all have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Like I said, if you want to call me later, I'll be happy to meet with you or talk to you on the phone. Okay. Uh, Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Item E would be the bid for sneak and sear warning contract and put on the duty protocol. Thank you very much. 
No, actually we did not. We uh, contacted a number of contractors. Uh, it's a very, very small project, uh, very small amount of profit uh, margin for them, and they just were not interested in bidding. Um, I had discussions with two of them. They both were throwing numbers around in the ninety dollars to $100,000 range, which is somewhere around $300 a foot. I was choking on that. Uh, there's another water issue that we have to talk about this evening, we'll talk later, and that's uh, involving jack and boring underneath Highway 45. That's a $200 a foot. So you can imagine uh, just digging a trench and putting a, a line versus going underneath the freeway. Okay? Uh, we do have a couple of options. Um, uh, one is that uh, we rebid the project at a little bit later date. Uh, it, typically, contractors see things cut, uh, slow down and actually get cut off right after the first of the year. It's possible that these folks will take some more interest, but if they start throwing around the same numbers that they were throwing around, I, I just can't see where it makes any sense. So here's the other option. Okay? Um, I was asked to go through and assess whether or not the utility department could install this line in the camp. Uh, what you have here in front of you on this, this little spreadsheet is basically the cost that I assessed uh, to install a uh, 600 linear feet of 10 inch line, uh, allow the 4 inch uh, cast iron line that's installed in the street now to remain, and possibly uh, reconnect the 4 inch line from Braden onto the new 10 inch line. If, if, it's, if it's possible within the scope of time and a half, otherwise we might get that up during the summer. Okay? But the cost is still included in this uh, spreadsheet. I came up, uh, if you notice to the right, there's a line, there's a, a column that says total. Um, that's the actual amount. Uh, the total rounded up is kind of uh, arbitrarily giving myself some buffer, just in case there was a mistake made. And then if you look down at the bottom, uh, there's a reserve. $3,000. So the combination between that rounding up and that reserve is about uh, $6,000 for a uh, price uh, estimation of about $34,735, which with maybe about $7,000 cushion. Okay. I think it will take uh, the utility department um, two weeks to do this. This is assuming that the weather uh, cooperates with us. We have on the books a great deal of, of services to work. Uh, so with the month of December, we would have to finish all of those. Plus we do a lot of training, federal inspections, etc. And so it's going to be a tough push for us to get in and do this in the time frame, uh, you know, January into February. Uh, but it can be done if you wish. Um, again, free bargain is paying for the project, so there's no out of pocket for us. All of the expenses that are on the sheet would be resolved by free bargain. Uh, including the labor, and it is an opportunity for me to uh, cast some of my expense labor into capital. Uh, so there is somewhat of savings to the uh, department. Um, so all I can say is I can rec you know, my recommendation would be either, again, try to go out for bid and try to get something uh, going with some contractors, or just bite the bullet and go ahead and do it ourselves. Uh, it's really a call on this. I'm sure the department can stand up to. Um, I really don't see much other choice. Okay? Just, just for your own, there's two quotes on the back here. It says utility quote A, a couple of sheets there, and I didn't want to list the contractor, so I kind of scratched that. It says contractor quote B. Uh, if you kind of go through there, they're pretty much the same items, but there is a huge difference in the cost being charged to the contractor. It's the same company as GC Supply, and you know, a little bitter. Okay? But there, in some cases, there is much as a 30 to 40 percent increase the cost of the contractor. And then, of course, he has to pay tax on the sales tax, but we would not. And um, at least, is that correct, Jim? In this case, we would not pay sales tax on it. Thank you. Uh, so there's, you know, uh, you know 10, about 10 percent savings in addition to that. So um, it's your call as to what you'd like me to do. Uh, but I can tell you that uh, the department is capable of doing this far and we don't have weather issues. I'm kind of nervous about breaking in and exposing a 16-inch duct line main in 10 degree weather and then cutting a 10-inch hole in it, which is our main feed line going through the season. I'm a little nervous about that. But other than that, uh, I'm sure we can tackle this. So. What do you say? I'm sorry, go ahead. I just wonder, what is the timeline that the FAQ is asked to get this done? Their drop-dead date 
uh, it's a little further out from what I thought it was. It's about the, the end of February. Okay. About the end of February. Mid, uh, mid to end of February. Did they have any contingencies on what they would pay for or won't pay for if we don't meet that deadline? Um, I think that, well, kind of the long and skinny of it is going from the library complex, you would have to run a potential line back to Main Street. So whether it's on city property in the form of a new water line or on private property in the form of a service line, somehow they're going to have to get back to Main Street. Well, if you look at the length of, of the project running on private property, you're only 125 feet off of running a whole new service line. Okay? Um, you know, they get the benefit of having that, uh, a 10 inch main on Hamlet, Washington, Kaysen, okay, so all the way through the city, you've got these high pressure inch mains running through. So it's good fire protection for the college and for us. Okay? Uh, it does provide some additional water resources for future growth for, for the college mm -hmm. and uh, also cuts down on some of our operational issues that we've got in flow, going down a mill, <coughs> Jack Street, and so forth. Um, but other than other than running the 10-inch line down on private property, I don't believe we have another choice. Uh, they've looked at uh, fire pumps, etc. in the building. I think they decided that that is not adequate, that the tennis line makes a lot more sense to do it. I think the one deadline they had to have was knowing that where, if we were going to do the tennis, we had to have things tap out from the library. You've got to know basically we can put it in the street, it's my understanding. Yeah, but the rest of the data, um, if I talk to the contractor, and, and all he needs to know is approximately where the line's going to be. And uh, where his placement, where he's actually coming out of the project and coming into the street to make the tap would be no different if I was tapping on one house here and another house there. You know, if you want it on the left side of your property or the right side of the property, it makes a difference to us. Um, he just needs to know approximately where the one's going to be. And it's uh, very close to the old one. You said the uh, people you talked about did this job and did it all from Hitler? Somewhere between eighty-five and one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Now, I want to caution. I want to <coughs> put a little fish on that. You know, it could be that they're telling you these numbers simply because they don't want to do the project right now. Okay. You know, the Rebel Construction is notorious for coming in with a, with a blind bid, meaning they've never come out and looked at the project or the plans, and they'll throw a two hundred fifty thousand dollars bid out there on a, on a ninety thousand dollars project. Okay, just as you know, courtesy to make sure their name is still in the, in the pool. Um, you know, this this is. I feel that this is an extremely realistic number. Uh, this does not include profit for a contractor, mind you. Okay, but this is what he's looking at: is his costs, labor, parts, etc., equipment. You know, uh, fuel. You know, it's all included. In here, okay, so whatever his market is going to be on parts, whatever his market, uh, tax and uh, and labor is what he's going to charge for bid. So it's a fairly, it's a fairly, I think it's a fairly good representation. I had a number of people look at this, including packaging ratio, gravel, sand, uh, you know, measuring, make sure that we were doing this correctly. So if we start the work and we find a problem, what
you're not actually giving free bottles of clothes. You're just going to say, we'll do this job for you. And then we're going to send him a bill later. Is that the same? How are you going to do this? And that's, that's completely up to the board on how you wish to do this. This is what my expectation of the cost is going to be. It is with, with some reserve, about $35,000, just under $35,000. Uh, if you want them to post that $35,000 now, that's fine. If you want us to bill us once the, the project's complete, that's fine. However you see fit to, to fund the project. I guess, I guess what I'm asking, are we required to do this project for them so they can get it to their contractor? Oh. Um, are we required? Is this a requirement that we have to do it well, for them? Well, we have to do it for them? There, there's no requirement for us to do this. We could say, we've got a 16 inch main on Main Street, you've got to go to it. Okay. I mean, we could actually just say, it's yours. Okay. And that's what their original plan with the fire pumps and some other things we're going to do. But that's us on, doing nothing. On private property. On private property. But when all the discussion started, it benefits everybody. And this is an area where we have a four inch cast iron line that's many years old that, you know, taking out of our system would be a good thing. So if the combination is, you know, we get them to pay for it, we get the benefit of getting the new line, and we both benefit. Yeah, that's the forward more. Okay. And there is state requirements for supplying engineering drawings to the state from approval, you know, things like that, that we've had to do. Okay. It's also my understanding that this is within a price range that the department's already agreed in a letter to cover so much. It, it's, it's slightly over uh, kind of an initial best guess estimate. I was expecting uh, if the city was to do it, uh, or perform the work, be about thirty thousand dollars. They're pretty close. So um, uh, since those initial conversations and now, and the fact we've got some, a lot of cushion in here, you know, we're still kind of in that ballpark. But they have agreed, I believe, to thirty-five thousand dollars for that issue. But if it turns into sixty thousand. Uh, all bets are off. I'll just be honest. I mean, they, they want to they want renegotiate, maybe. I don't know. But for them just to write a check for $60,000, I don't see that happening. So, you know, you know, there is that potential. You'd run into the same problem if you had a private contractor also doing a job. You know, there's something that you don't disclose to him. And he says, look, there's this 30-foot uh, block of concrete sitting down here that nobody knows about it, you know, and I, I'm going to have to saw cut through, you know, a big chunk of it. Okay, it's going to cost $15,000 to do it. You know, what do you want to do? Okay. Um, you know, every project I've been in has always had some element of risk, you know. Um, you can't get around that with old utilities in the ground. Cities guess, are rough. I guess what I'm going to ask you, how much does this really benefit the city of Henderson and the residents of the city? Um, I really want how much it benefits the residents of the city of Henderson. I think the biggest benefit that I see is the increase in um, pressure and stability of the mill street. Okay, that I, I have high pressure lines that run across from Main Street to Mill Street and out from Mill Street as a carrier line. Other than that, we don't have any other. Um, we don't have any commercial property or residential property that we connect onto this line. Most of the, um, well, actually, <coughs> there's a second thing. The, the line on break, you know, and feed to break, uh, most of those commercial structures are all fed off of uh, break, which is an old four inch cast iron line that also will have to be replaced at some point. That runs over to, um, I forget the name of the street, I'm sorry. But uh, that line behind those businesses. If Reed Harbor would ask if this would really study and put the line down through there, if they weren't asking for anything, would we be thinking about redoing really this at this point? No. So we disclose everything we know to an outside contractor. Correct. And, but yet, a problem occurs. And it's a $100,000 it's the contractor's problem. It's no. not the no, normally, normally if it's something that's not disclosed from the plan or the specifications, uh, the engineer has to prove a change order to deal with that issue. Whether it be a rotted out culvert that needs to be replaced or you know anything they dug into that was not disclosed, 
the city would have to either make some type of adjustment to the contract for that expense. But we've disclosed with maps and everything we know, mm -hmm. then we wouldn't have to. No, then, it, then the contract will Then it's will their license yeah, bonded, right. that's their problem. Right, yeah. Okay. And we have, we've had projects where you've gone through wetlands and things like that, mm -hmm. and we've disclosed that, and it's up to the contractor to ensure that he does not damage those wetlands. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is if they were dealing with their contractor, and them doing it, we don't worry about disclosure. We don't worry. No. We don't, if they find something down there that costs free to know, it doesn't matter to us. No, it doesn't. Okay. All right. Well, well, uh, question. This is one question. Can we allow can we allow their construction company to do it on our fifth grade? I think that really has an answer that's come from the attorney or, or Jim. Yes. In other words, it's the other way the other way is if, if they're if they're wanting to do this and it's cost affected them, can we allow them to get their contractor to dig our street up and run down our streets? Yes. Mm -hmm. the do it all the time. All as, the long, time. as long as they follow the state approved set of plans and schedules. Of course, we want to expect that work to make sure it's done to our standards. But yeah, because we're going to end up with the money when they get done. So we'll make sure it's done to our standards. But yes, we can allow a Hey, anybody a developer to go in and do an expansion of our utility. You do that with the uh, with subdivisions all the time. Yeah. I think the next next question I want to ask goes to the fire department is their water supply. There's other methods that they're going to use to take care of everything. Would that fire suppression be as good as we ran this lane? Do you, do you have any idea? Anybody said anything you your chief about anything? Are y'all about this? We can talk about that for that 10 inch. Thing going in there, it would it would feed it a lot better. I mean, they would have to have their pump. If they if they did the line with the pump, it's my understanding you're pretty much providing better fire protection for that one mill. Yeah. yeah. Where if you put this lane up the street and tie the two streets together, you're help, you're helping every building along that street. You're helping the backside of Braden that fronts on Main Street. You're and pretty much you know all the way up to University, even part of University will have better flow. So, you know, it does, you're improving fire protection for a larger area versus one you built. Well, there's no major construction up through the underground, up through there, except what was put down years ago. So there should be unforeseen things in there. Nothing that we really know about. I don't foresee it being a huge dollar figure problem if we run into problems. But could you end up with $10,000? Yes. $100,000? No. You know, you know, you could end up across a couple of storm drains that we didn't realize we rusted out and need to be replaced anyway. I'm not saying that it needs to be replaced anyway. It's just that we find them during construction, then we may be out of a call still with some issues. It needs to be dealt with. It's just the ones you uncover. The last thing the time is, is if you run into a larger problem, you, you can just abandon the project and just call it quits right there. Church, okay. down over to Old Jack Creek Road, 
you know, Jack Street Cove, all the way up to the schools. Okay, I mean, this is, every time you install a large volume, high pressure line, okay, you, all these small laterals benefit. Uh, I could go on for a long time. No, that's that's okay. I, just, I just want to make sure we're going to benefit from the project. And it's not just being, well, I understand now that, that it is, and you can benefit the whole area. So uh, and that's one of my, and I, I, think, I think it would be. You know. One of the comments that I was going to make is that we got someone that's willing to put this almost $35,000 project that does benefit our citizens that. It would be a hard project for us to just take on and do on our own, correct? Uh, it, just to do it to increase the hydraulics of the system, okay, is always expensive. It's like sewer, you know, you never want to, you want to put it in once and never pay for it again, and you can't, okay? Uh, Water is the same way. It's expensive to put in. It's, it's difficult to move around existing utilities. Um, and like I said, you know, there's some underground electrical that, Southwest has put in, and we have some issues with that. So I'm not, you know, jumping up yeah. and down, but I'm saying, look, you know, somebody else is paying for it, and the hydraulics are right. Do you Sounds like a good deal. Do you want to do the project? Um, well, that's what do you want to do? I, know, I, I, I would like to do the project at a different time of the year, but I would do the project because. Uh, I want to get some training for some new operators that I have that I can't provide any other way. Um, it gives us an opportunity to do a little bit of a change other than just gas all the time. Okay. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind doing the project. I'd like to do the project. If there, would they do the project themselves if we don't do it? I think they would run it on private property. Yeah, I, I don't think they'd be, so they, they have to have the expertise. One of the problems with just getting a contractor is that they have to have, have, to have the expertise to go around all the other existing utilities. And that sounds simple on the surface, but it's, it's actually quite complicated. Um, the engineer and hydraulic, you know, the, to install that. Logistics-wise, so, what were you saying you were looking at a project to start there? Uh, I don't believe that we can complete the work that we have on the books right now much before January 1. I'd be lucky to do that. Very lucky to do that. Uh, I think realistically we're going to have to be sometime in the, you know, beginning part of January. Okay, and we will run, you know, two, maybe two and a half weeks on that project. By doing this, it's my impression that Casey would basically be shut down. No. That would not be. No, we would take it in small sections. Uh, you don't just dig a big long trench in the winter and leave it open. Okay, one is that you've got issues of pipes freezing and all sorts of bad things happen, okay? Uh, you basically tap up on university you want to work towards Main Street, okay? Because uh, the last thing you want to do is open up Main Street, okay? It would be the very last thing you want to do, okay? So we we'll start off at the university and work our way backwards, okay? And as you dig or and excavate, you're actually installing pipe and backfilling. And then that way your, your ditch is always remaining fairly closed. And we would only close a small section, maybe the top third, move down to the center third, so people could, the construction traffic could get in and out, and uh, you know, people wanted to go on break would be able to go in and out, back, especially like near the pharmacy parking and so forth. And the reason I ask is with uh, the time of the first year when your student traffic will be so much less from the university out on the street, yeah. then because students won't come back till mid-January, does that sound about right? Yeah. There's your, a good two week period right after the first of the year. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. But you're not going to have to deal with that street traffic. That's correct. So, and and that, that had been suggested to me, and actually, it's a, it's a pretty good game plan. And okay. the next trip shift week is always in February, too. Yeah. The first full week in February. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you've got this target window. Assuming that the weather, the weather you know, uh, yeah. say lots of prayers for that. Yeah. Mark, I just say this. I'm for it. I think we did a good thing for it. I just want to lie. I just want to make sure that you're confident in doing what you're doing. Because we've asked you two or three times. Yes, you said I'd like to do it, but I really don't. Just I, I just got to have a good feeling in my belly that you want, you want to go in it and you want to do the job. We have and you're confident in doing it. Uh, we have tackled projects that were water projects like the Hickory uh, Listation, sewer Listation. It was, uh, you know, 
over a mile and a half of 10 inch main put in six feet of the ground. Yes. We've got the confidence to do this and I have no issue with this. Okay. Uh, this is a fairly simple, straightforward project in my life. Is the it's weather the thing, your biggest it's the weather concern? That's, okay. that's kind of bothering me. I don't like tapping on some metal pipe in the middle of January. It makes me, especially the high mm -hmm. service line that feeds the entire city, it makes me extremely nervous. Um, I would much prefer to do this in July, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But, uh, you but know, no, but no, 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 there is, there. you know, you do what you got to do. Well, that being said, I want to go ahead and make a motion to approve part of the water project in that project. I have a motion to approve the water project. Is it by the utility director? Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any further discussion on the motion? See none. All in favor, see by bye. Aye. Opposed, see the button. Okay. Next item on the agenda consider approval of drainage project for uh, Rural City Hall, Jim. Okay. Uh, you know, we looked at this before and then, you know, dealing with the drainage of back City Hall. You know, we flooded City Hall twice in recent years, in about the last two years. And a lot of that water, which we deal with a lot, uh, gave us a quote of uh, him actually pouring a concrete trough. Uh, from the back of the building down toward Washington Street. You know, it's the same type project we discussed before. Now, this includes our crew, our public work crew is doing most of the digging, getting ready, and he'll do the final grading of the, the drainage way, and then pouring the concrete. And his plug does include concrete at all, as far as that. But we will still be required to do the initial uh, ditch work <coughs> in the back of uh, it. Car, the car has already removed the large so that that's trap repairs are already gone. Uh, but before we proceed it, we want to get y'all's opinion and uh, let y'all approve if you want us to move forward. So this outlet will be out of pocket plus some labor of our own. And there's no deadline when this one has to be done. We can even wait till spring if you see fit. In fact, I'm going to do it. I've got a piece because I'm sure it's going to stop paying one of these days. Yeah, it's pretty bad. You know, it, you know. I don't know. If we get rained like we got that last time, I don't know. You know we'll take something like this to you know, keep it from flooding back. Pleasure to the board. It will continue on the project. Yeah. Well, where will the water, water going to go into? I mean, the water coming in the back, you know, where is it going to go? Is that going to be a bit? Is it going to pour out onto anybody else's property? Well, it's going to flow down this concrete trough we're making, dig, for lack of a better word. Down toward Washington, there's a catch basin right before you hit the sidewalk down there in Washington. So it would actually drop into that catch basin. Now, for some reason, that catch basin can't handle any more water either. It's going to run over the top of the sidewalk and down into Washington Street. Now, is there an outside chance that the Gleaner's house has been, I mean, the Gleaner's, you know, the Gleaner's down there have been flooded in recent years? Now, this last one, they were not. Uh, for one reason or another, it did not get in their door. Uh, so the water flows across the street, then the catch basin is there, and then there's actually the sidewalk across the street that flows between those two buildings. There's a narrow gap, but it does flow in there. Now, if all that gets restricted and stopped up, is it possible somehow somebody ended up to clean their house? It's possible. But they flooded before with none of this you know, being in place. So. Do we believe that catch basin can accommodate? We feel like the catch basin and the two in the street can handle the flood. And as I said, as soon as it flows over, it could have not to, or those catch basins got stopped up. It will flow across the sidewalk next to the cleaners and into that hole. The question is, will that flow across before it backs all the way up the street? But to do, get in the cleaners house, you want to just plant to to put water down there on the street.
receive updates on downtown Hampton Project. Jim, you want to give us an update of where we're at? We don't have a whole lot of information other than the fact that yes, I do have the plan of specs in my office. They are out to bid. Contractors are picking those up. Uh, bids are due in on December the 2nd at 10 a.m., I think. I have to check my time, but it is December 2nd. Well, we, we will be presenting those bids to y'all at the December meeting for approval. Of course, the bid results do have to go to Nashville, and TDOT has to approve those. So, you know, our approval will be contingent on their approval. Uh, we just, we will not know exactly. I can't think the county project bids the same exact day. Uh, the one other note that we found out for certain is they did design this with LED lights. So that will be an energy saving thing. And so uh, we do know that the pitch text were written for LED lights. So uh, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions I can, but I now let that all we know. County project will be there at the same time, so. Any questions on that? Okay. And other, and under, other bid is, uh, Michelle White's here with us, and I'll let her go discuss our sales tax referendum that, that the county had that just, just finished the last election. Now it looks like it's back in our court again. Thank you, Jane. Uh, it's my pleasure <coughs> to be here this evening, and I'm here just to be a resource to any of you that might have questions regarding this. As um, you may recall, it's been a little while back in July, you all passed a resolution asking the Chester County Election Commission to put the sales tax referendum on the November ballot. The county had a certain amount of time to respond to this resolution, and they did indeed, and it was on our county ballot. Unfortunately, that referendum failed, so in a nutshell, what happens is we default back to your resolution saying we're going to have an election for just the city of Henderson voters. Where it got a little sticky is the law um, requires us to do it within 45 days, but not greater than 60 days of when the referendum failed that was on the county ballot. So we've been working with that date, and it appears that it will be January the 22nd is when we'll call for that um, city-only election to discuss or determine the sales tax. Should we start early Early voting will be January the 2nd through the 15th, 17th, 2nd through the 17th. Now, we were talking today, just to make sure that's the truth. Our referendum will read showing that, that half of the, even half of the uh, local sales tax will go to the school system. Did the county show that? We are talking about the counties did not have it on. No, because it was not part of their resolution in their original document. Had well, it been, it, they could have had that option. It's, it's part of our resolution, so it is. that it will be up when it's on the ballot. People will receive it and say that half the half the half it goes to the district. That's right. It, it is very clear in yours. Whereas, as part of the negotiation and signed the city of Henderson Energy Agreement, um, it talks about the history of how you. Gave your half cent to the city, and then this is one six paragraph. If the referendum is approved, the city of Henderson wishes to donate the first 50 percent of the tax revenue to the Chester County School System. And it's very clear. We have to lower our property taxes by. We we'll lower our property taxes by 15 cents or 12 percent. Yeah. That's right. Well, the law is very clear. You can't put that part in the ballot. That is, but you can put. We can't put that in the future. Yes, nor could the county. But we just need to communicate what it is people are voting on. Yes. So our city attorney is in the process of working your ballot phase now. And um, hopefully they'll get that within a week or so. We'll get that approved by the state election office. It's a little bit of an unusual tax referendum. Most are either adding or taking away taxes. This one is kind of a hybrid because you're letting it ride, if you will. So the state coordinator's office is very um, interested in making sure that, that it is worded exactly right. But I have had clearance from the state coordinator's office that you indeed can indicate in your ballot that it goes to the school because it's part of your resolution. Jim, in today's, in today's tax structure, that high percent people so much, so to speak. Uh, help me out here and the figures. The half cent, our part of the half cent, the, the, the 
whole half cents about three hundred sixty thousand dollars. The half of one student would be one hundred eighty. Ours would be one hundred eighty, which can lower our property tax. We figure about fifteen cents or twelve percent of what we're doing. I was doing that for the time to make sure the school was one hundred eighty thousand dollars. <laughs> well, you know what we're talking, you know, what we're talking about is it's, it's really important that the people understand that these things that people know. The seventy when the school systems. When the school is paid off, the 74 half cent that the school get, gets now, they still get it, which is about 180000 So they that, that's still out there for them to use. That's what I'm trying to say. If we can pass this, that gives the school system about $360,000 they can put in the capital outlay fund for the next school they need to build. So, I mean, this is, to me, it's more looking down the road instead of, Sometimes we just do it at the very end and it costs us a lot more. And so, but, uh, and then also for us, for us, we're trying to honestly give the property that property owner and the business owner a, a break. So in essence, in essence, it's very simple. Is if you spend $10,000 in retail sales inside the city of Henderson, that's $50. If we lower your, we, we, you take that, we go to the property tax, and you pay $500 a year in property tax, your property tax would increase $62. Plus, the school system will get $180,000. That's what it is. You're going to get the, 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 resident, the resident property owner in the city of Henderson is going to get a tax increase. They just choose which one they want. It's a win-win. So it's what, it's whatever they want you to do. So that's what it is. And basically, we've already said this is home. There's no going back. Is it? Cars on the roads and high gear, we just need to get yeah, behind it. Yeah. Yeah. Once it fails, it can Our resolution requires a special election. Correct. On January 22nd. Yeah. And that date is to be set by the Chester County Election Commission on the 24th, is when we'll be meeting on that. It's not been officially set, but it's uh, in the process. So the other thing, too, is. Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, but we were talking about today is how it works is we were hoping that we would have only one site. We're not going right. to be able to have that. Since it, since the sites for it, the fourth and fifth and sixth are inside the city, we still have to have those three precincts on election day. So you'll have Westchester, Eastchester, and City Hall likely have the county line election, but you'll just have those three precincts. Yeah. And because it is a contested election, you are required to have the early voting just like um, yes. And the cost, the cost. estimated because it is a special election, it's just ours. Yeah. Yeah, we'll it's be required to cover that cost, which is estimated to be. I'm, my goal is to keep it less than 10 grand, depending on early voting. It's eight to nine, seven hundred, depending on how busy we are in early voting. At, at present, I'm going to do a minimal um, early voting workers, and if, if it's quiet, we'll be able to get away with that. If they slam us, we'll have to have more workers. My goal is ten thousand or less. Jim, I assume that has to come out of general unclassified. Um, let me grab a budget real quick and see if we can budget anything for elections this time. I don't feel like we did much. Not enough. Elections. I have twenty five hundred dollars in the budget, and I don't know if we leave bills for the November election at all. I don't. We didn't have nothing going about, so we should. So, uh, with that being said, they're twenty-five hundred dollars. We're going to need ten thousand, so we need seventy-five hundred more out of the general capital outlay. Mm -hmm. And just for your reference, all of the same codes are required for a special hall election as for the county election. Just like we were mentioning, the early voting, the three precincts, ballots, um, newspaper. <laughs> That's the big chunk. Um, I have over 2,000 in just newspaper notice, legal notices. There are eight that are required for the um, uh, Speaking of requirements of the election, your entire resolution, I'm required by code to print it in its entirety at least once during the election cycle, too. So that's included in your 2,000 paper. Mm -hmm. um, as you also know, we have to vote all three nursing homes, the jail, to 
force this C still we probably need to have motion to move that into that line item. I'll make a motion to move to 7500. Mm -hmm. Motion to move 7500 into election line item. I've got to outline. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Is there any further discussion? And then I'll say about aye. Aye. Opposed to no, no. Motion carries. Is there anything else we except educating the public? Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your help. Stand ready to serve. We'll have a good
Okay. Uh, the, his option is saying the last 12 months where he's paying $3,000 a month, which is the year of 2017, he wanted that as an option if he wanted to have that last year. Whereas the lease spelled out, it's tying him to pay in that last year. So that's the difference is, is it an option for him that he can get out of the lease or that's at 26 months, mm -hmm. or are you requiring to pay that lease mm -hmm. for the full 38? And when we, when we were John and I, we were at the Blue Street, he did it for the whole 38 months. But, he, but his motion yeah. said for the full 38 months. It's this, this, the 2200 for the first eight months, the 2500 for the next 18, 18, 18 months, months, and then uh, the last 12 months was the 3000 So I took it. Once we agreed to the dollars, uh, based on Tom's response and even on the table here, he'd say, yeah, that's right. Later, the, and I thought everybody was sort of agreement based on the dollars, he was okay with it, but evidently not. So, you know, I'm not saying he may have, I think really there was a misunderstanding about what each one of you were asking and what y'all were approving. So I think it was a legitimate misunderstanding because when he originally said, he did say 26 months lease with an option for another year. Uh, to update you on the project, we haven't got very far with doing the site work and stuff between the weather and the rain and the uh, sloppy conditions. We haven't we got the parking lot, I think, staked off. But what we so wet down there right now, it's going to be hard to get in there. Um, I think concrete guys wait for better weather. Of course, it's freezing weather hadn't helped anything. So uh, we are moving forward to dock level. Where I think got the they're here, they're at the mm -hmm. And we got some information with EDA on the lighting, so we got an electrician about getting those up. Uh, so we are proceeding, and I think Tom and them, I think they've got an estimate on this some the restroom work and ready to maybe some need the water or termite damage and some of the restroom framing. So he's called about that. So we are. Still trying to work to get them in that building. So, what do you need from us, Jim? Just to tell us which way you want to go. You do the year option or tell them that's how they vote the first time around. Charles Cobb. Are you going to give him an option? Do you have oh, about to? I was about to say that many I was about to say so. I was looking if he would if he would raise the rent to twenty seven hundred dollars a month and have it for eight for the first twenty six months, leave it at twenty seven and then leave off the last twelve. We can then make something like that vote. That's definitely an option. Even one or the other. If he would if he I mean, that, that's my feeling. I think if you cut that lease short that last year, you've got to do some you've got to adjust the rent more than the twenty two. 2200 and then the 25 percent. That's just my favorite. I'm through that again. Yeah. If, 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 we, if you do away with the last 12 months of 3000 So he has, he has an option. He, he, he's got the option of, of, of keeping the last year at 3000 or up in the rent to straight $2,700 for the 26 months. $2,700 for okay. You got that, Jim? He's going to be paying $2,700 instead of twenty five dollars during that little term. Well, they, not the first month. The first eight months, he's going to pay $27,000. $27,000 for all of them. $27,000 all the way around. Right. For all the way so across. The entire term. Well, so then he goes up to $3,000. Yeah. Yeah. $27,000 all the way across. You know, unless he, now, if he, now, if he, now, if he, now, if he, the last option, the, 12, the last 12 months of $3,000 month goes away. Yes, yeah. he comes back and negotiates rent. We might want to raise it to thirty-five hundred dollars. What if we <laughs> raised it to twenty-seven hundred? I mean, he it sounds like he's worse off with no option to go to the twenty-seven hundred for the whole term of the lease. Would we be more comfortable with? I haven't done the math on it to figure, but if you get twenty-seven hundred. I know he won twenty two hundred for the first six months. I'm sorry, uh, eight. eight first eight months because he was looking at a second lease that he still had to cover. Uh, I think I'm not sure he's coming out 
we're helping him, but I don't know. I wish you're not helping us. Yeah. I wonder if I wonder if we like this is something we don't have to move on today. We don't even have to do it now. We don't have to move on. I was trying to think is is you telling that we want to read your if he's not willing to do the option, the third option, like your option. What, my son, you're Johnny, doing, tell me one more time. I'm sorry, I'm lost. Well, well when you do away with the, the last year, we go away with 12 months and 3,000, it goes okay. completely away. Got it. And it's $2,700 a month for the 26 months. Straight across. Straight across. Starting in November of 14. Yeah. Right. Starting this month. Straight through, straight on through. That's $70,000. That's $70,000. dollars for 26 months. And we're putting in. $100,000. We're going to put in. I guarantee you, we end up with about $100,000 in there. We will do. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But you know, that,
So, and then, you know, we like you expect here, we're starting to put air in half on the center room. By the time we do that, I think John's right too. I think, I think our estimate is 65,000. By the time it's all over, there's going to be a few thousand under. I think we're going to be a little bit more you know, with that one by the time it's all set down. But we're also, if you go back and look at the big team thing, what we've, what we've done on jobs to get jobs, there's 25 jobs sitting out there. And, and we're not, and we're, and we're making, we're making, we're leasing the building. So usually it's just giving everything away. So I, I want to, but I'm not, I'm not against working with them and helping them. But I think that we just made an agreement. And that's, and I think, and I think, and I think, and I think that's we all, all we all agreed to it. And now we don't need to go back and go back. I mean, and if, if there's an issue with that, then we can somehow the mayor will set, somebody the mayor, Jim, y'all sit down. I think, I think y'all can do that. Okay. Deep down, he's, I think we all believe, and he believes, he's going to be there in 
David is informing uh, that the, there's an old two-inch line that runs kind of down behind that building, and it's inadequate for what uh, the service requests are. And that we're going to have to make some other arrangement to provide water service to that building complex. So I looked at the project, and what it really boiled down to is that the only way for us to get water to that side of the road, uh, for whatever reason, that uh, the water main actually runs down the meridian um, of the 45. Uh, when you go underneath a highway with water, it's different than going underneath a highway with gas. Okay, they require you to take, uh, put in a solid piece and weld it together uh, steel casing pipe <coughs> and make your water connection and bring your water pipe across. You can imagine the type of sinkhole you'd create if you didn't have a casing pipe underneath 45. Our luck, my luck, would be you know, 10 ambulances and school buses and so on. Um, so when I was talking with the mayor, uh, you know, I was estimating we're going to have to put in a 4 inch, 6 inch uh, steel casing pipe and jack and board the 45. One of the questions the mayor asked me is why aren't we actually providing fire suppression on that side of the freeway? Right now, you have just lakes that come over, you know, just the lateral lines that come over to a fire hydrant. There isn't any water that runs up the, uh, the east side of the 45, okay? Just one line at the center, line coming over to a fire hydrant. This gentleman had to bring fire trucks up to, to that uh, building. He would literally have to shut down the 45 to get so I went to uh, uh, the engineer that we use, and we're estimating it's going to cost about $200 a linear foot to put in a 8-inch normal main okay, inside a carrier pipe and bring across uh, a line that would do two things. One is uh, provide a single fire hydrant and also tee off to provide some lateral lines running up down towards ducts and then up towards uh, the old you know, robo stop. It's a marathon station now. Um, in any respect, uh, no matter how we looked at it, whether we just brought straight lines, you know, towards ducks and then the Sears and then up north, it was still $30,000. So no matter how you did it, uh, to get all of that property covered was about 90000 bucks. So uh, what I'm proposing tonight is, and there's some engineering work, this is a project I absolutely do not feel comfortable doing and feel that we need a professional stamp. Um, I think we need to just look at the difference between what we were originally going to have to spend, which was about $20,000 uh, to get that four or six inch line across, and to move up to an eight inch line that actually provides water suppression or fire suppression and, and water for future building expansion is only another, you know, 10, four, you know, somewhere between 10 and $13,000. Uh, what I'd like to do is go ahead and have the board's permission to. Um, Hire an engineer who's already done the preliminary work, submit plans to TDEC, and then go out for bid uh, so that we require a contractor that's capable of jack and boring at 45. Okay? Um, I'm not sure what Edward's time frame is, but we're just going to have to make sure that we do this in our time frame, not, not his, unfortunately. But I'm expecting to spend somewhere around $30,000 for that project. It makes sense to do it. Uh, we, we absolutely have, to have no fire suppression capabilities on that side of the freeway. So ducks and the new Sears complex or whatever he's going to turn that into uh, the building next to it and then up along their uh, body lungs uh, you know, facility or maybe charge as it is. So um, that's one issue I need the board to act on so if they would please tonight to give me permission to move forward with the engineering drawings and the plans to get this done. Will be an issue first or you do the next year but we well, you just get the plans done. Huh? You know, this year's budget has been extremely tight. Um, we were at a point where we were kind of worried about whether what water was going to make it or not. Um, I think we're. I think with Edwards. Um, well, I uh, he may be able to get a buy for a while on that two-inch line. Okay, the one that's on the back. Uh, it's not going to provide all the water it needs, but it may, and, and maybe we can push this off to some time. Um, uh, it's not much to get the plans drawn up and get that process started. It takes a great deal of time to process those plans for TDEC. And so, um, you know, that's kind of uh, that's 
small portion of these really good board in this year's budget. But uh, the other part, you know, that's over and above. And uh, we can do it in another time frame. The west side of Highway 45 has been a problem for us. And we've discussed it. In fact, we even did the project. Matt Roy was still here. Uh, actual water main on the west side that ran the Robo stop all the way back up here to Boston Chivalry. Uh, price was just too high. I think it was a 10 inch. We ran the entire length. Mm -hmm. uh, and we've known we've had a problem down there. The reason the 8 inch water main now sits in the median is the fact is it was put in when the dust part went in back in the late 60s and the highway got changed. So that's the reason the existing fire, uh, water line is in the middle of the median. Uh, the five hydrants are all located on the east side and nothing on the west side. So I think we have one on Wilson School Road. And then the next one on the west side is on Tucker Cove. So yes, if there's a fire anywhere down there, the fire department or the police department is going to shut down the whole highway for the duration. So that's not a good situation. I think we need to proceed with this project. When the marketing company is going to have to do this for what they need, us, you know, we also need to do the time to look and see about doing the fire suppression too. If we're going to jack and board that thing in, we might as well be enough to do the fire and break the And that starts, starts that process. Well, I'd like to motion that they go ahead and get the engineer drawing done and get everything ready to submit to see that and then work from there. You know, have, have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Have a second. Any discussion on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor, say bye bye. All right. Uh -huh. All opposed, say bye bye. What's your hear? You have one? one very quick one. Um, we need to, to consider a change procedure that we don't have to act on this evening. The problem is that uh, we approve the utility budget in July. We then go out and purchase gas parts uh, specifically for mains. Um, our manufacturers are having issues. We're seeing lead times now of five months. Uh, the orders I'm placing today, I'm expecting to get sometime in February or March of next year. Okay, unless something changes. Uh, they were running about three weeks and they just keep worse and worse and more and more behind throughout the five months. Uh, so July comes, we get our budget, and now we're outlining names. Okay? It eats into the time when we really should be running services. Okay? The only way to stop the cycle is to get mains run in the spring. But the trouble is I don't have money. Okay, So what I'm going to come to you after I get kind of a better feel on what potentially we would do and how much it would cost, maybe next budget, or next meeting, I'm sorry is to ask you to, for a one-time expenditure to purchase uh, materials for mains that we would install in the spring of 2015. That would mean we would start sometime perhaps April when the weather's uh, conducive. We would run maybe to the 1st of July. After July, we would focus just on services in a time when, when the demand's there, you know, heading into cold weather. Uh, right now, I'm, I've got uh, 14 services that are uh, being asked to and here we are in what, uh, you know, heading into December. Um, it's not a good time to be installing service, gas services. You know, these people needed heat yesterday, not now. So uh, it's just something I'd like to consider for the next budget meeting. And I'll bring you back a uh, better understanding of what I'm looking to do. Well, let me ask you this question. I remember you were talking about that, and I, I was thinking about that. I remember when I first got, first got elected, how many years did we go from not even running the main? Yeah. There, we yeah. didn't have a main. How many years, Jim, did we go by that main extension? It was, it was a long time. Three or four years. Of and I realized gas was high, and that's one of the reasons it was. But what I'm sitting here thinking, instead of a, one thing we might have had an option is, is if we come from around July budget, just plan on that July budget being run the main in the spring. And let's push you back running names for about eight months to ten months. So we're not running in the spring. Next yeah. year in the fall, wait until the spring to run our mains. Now you have your budget you passed in July, and you can push it on in there. Then you can order. Yeah. Then you can order in the fall to have your have your service your line delivered in, in the first of the year. Yeah. And that way, that that way, all we're, what we're doing. I, know, I realize what's going to happen. Is, is that six months that we're not doing anything, that we're not running, maybe people want gas next year. But we just got to realize and tell them we're not running mains until the spring. We're not running even mains until the spring. Well, if I can find some small projects, maybe we can do something. Well, I'm sure six about, of one or half this. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm sure between uh, 
six more members are here to find each other today. I'm sure they could. <laughs> Uh, well, we can do sewer rehab. Yeah, you know, yeah, sewer rehab. Yeah, you got some? No, sir. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Chief? I've got one brief thing. Every year we, we uh, have a sale through govbill.com uh, for the period of the year we have to convocate anywhere from 10 to 20 cars uh, for uh, drug violations and, and uh, driving on the boat. Uh, and I also have some uh, cars that I've put out of service. <coughs> I think uh, Jim's working on putting those on GoDeal.com. And what I'd like to do that money is giving you to get you to put it back in the general fund every year. But as y'all know, we have a, a, a park now that's, uh, uh, I think, is looking better by the day. And, uh, there's a lot of hard work going on in the park. I think the park is in Dennis Bobby and, and uh, Carter. And uh, some of the money I, I can't donate to the park. Drug fund money and stuff that I've bought out of the drug fund has to go back in the drug fund. But the uh, cars that we can get a storage on and, uh, and, and get a certain other cars that we sell, I'd like to see that money go in to the, the, the police department. We'd like to see that money go in into the park fund or uh, upkeep in the park, maintenance of the park, anything that the mayor and the park. Let me say that. Let me say this. I did not confiscate not one of those cars. My office did that. <laughs> <laughs> so give the credit where the credit is due. Right? Jim, we have to automatically put it in the general fund. State law requires any sale does have to go into that line. And once it gets there, because it, you know, depending on what we, it's not really budgeted money, y'all can turn around and. Move it to move it and spend it for whatever y'all see fit. That's the reason it has to go to the general fund. Everything that's not a drug related seizure has to go to the general fund, whether it be a public works truck or a police car or a seed car. There are different line items, but all that money goes to the general fund revenue side. And then at that point, y'all can turn around and reappropriate that money for whatever expenditure y'all see fit. Well, on a different space, that would be, we could put that in the next one we appropriate for the budget. So I'll make the motion for approval, Chief Police request to do that. Uh, can we just wait till we see what kind of money we're talking about and but then bring the dollars to you? But it wouldn't make any difference. If we're just going to reduce the budget that we appropriate that much anyway. Well, I mean, we have no idea what we're talking about right now. I mean, well, the question is, the question is, we're going to do a sale. We're going to be mid budget here. Do you want to move that budget to get, increase that budget this year? Jim say that. Well, that'd be fine, Jim. I'll withdraw that. And then make the motion for the exact dollar amount. Yeah, I'll withdraw that. We'll and maybe at that time, the party committee and mayor and... Uh, because I'll be, be honest with you, I think we all... ...the say we would yeah. like this money is spent on these items, and that way you can appropriate to uh, authorize the expenditure off the side. Well, I'll withdraw that. We'll just wait till we get the money in there. Hey, we can't spend it before we get it anyway. Yeah. But we got a lot of stuff going. we got several things going to go deals, don't we, Jim? Yeah. Several things going to go deals because we've been here recently. But like, like her, one thing we were going to have to get uh, is some kind of utility work vehicle, like a gator or something like that, where it is, it's, it's inevitable. We're going to have to get one of those. Either that or, or she's going to ride around with Tom and the blue lights going. Mark, you got one of those? Yeah, we've got two things for sale. We're good. All right. Y'all got the router to be. Y'all got the regular sewer router to that, that be. That on the solar beam. Yeah. And then we'll the one, one ton truck. And, and the Carter's got a three quarter ton truck and it's also going up. Yeah. Uh, also, because he got his knee money. So I'm going to go several cars. So you got one we'll set by we, We've got several cars. I'm sorry. The cars that we're selling are not going to bring. All right. 
Are you not too big though? Sure. You can twist my arm. We have a nice It's a part commission, you know? We don't have no ass they're not, they're not really in the bids. The bids are like three or four hundred bucks for someone's car. I mean, we're not, let's be honest, we're not breaking the bank to sell this car. No, he's going up. No. Are you anything? I mean, this, 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 the only thing I was concerned about was 
I mean, I don't think the DMC dump, a dumpster that bad if it's if it's not if it's not boxing and breaks around. Maybe they could never move it out and it's gone. But the thing the deal I was concerned about is if, if we had to come here and dig it up, I don't want to pay for that stuff that's already in the ground. If it gets tore up or you know, or or we have to move it, or it has to be moved, we have to put a new water line. They need to understand that's the reason we were doing this letter to them to tell them that we can decide to put a water line on our easement, they'll have to move their stuff at their cost. There was another company has already bought the adjacent lot, and reading the deed, which Jerry's firm actually drafted, seems like uh, they do reference an easement on a flat somewhere at the courthouse. They don't specify what it is. So even the next owner, I'm scared, when they start their development, that easement is sort of going to get lost, and nobody's going to realize the contractor is not going to. The next thing you know. We're going to have the same problem on the adjacent property too. So I think we do have to make sure we give everybody notice that it is still there and we are expecting it to stay open. That's the reason Brent sent in this letter. Both of them just put on notice. There's been a lack of communication, I think, between the owners, contractors, and everybody out there. I mean, out this building, this building was the kind because the contractor of the building the building first guy did not do as a problem. Just put that on your roof button. When, when your choices fall in, you've got a problem. Yeah. We're no Does anybody else have anything else? Joe, appreciate you coming. Renee, happy to see you. Happy to be here. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll second that.